Hello everyone, welcome to the Yesod Hello World screencast. Uh, Yesod is a web application framework written in the Haskell programming language. It's designed to make type safe web applications and restful web applications very easy to program. Right now Yesod is on version 0 0.3. This, uh, this screencast was made June 23rd, 2010. So we just released version 0.3. The code in this screencast should work, I think, also for version 0.2. Probably it'll be working going forward as well. So the first step that you always take when writing a USOD application is you have to specify the language extensions that we're using. So we end up using two language extensions. The first one is type families. Type families allow you to have associated data types, a connection between two different data types some kind of uh, relationship between the two of them. So in a, in a USOD application, the only one that we end up using always is the associated routes data type. I'll end up explaining that a little bit more later. Uh, the routes data type is really what uh, powers the type safe URLs feature. We also use it in persistent, but this screencast won't be uh, covering persistent. The other language extension is quasi quotes. Quasi-quotes is a feature of Haskell that allows you to embed arbitrary syntax within Haskell code. We use this for three things. We use this for defining routes. You'll see that here. We use it for Hamlet, which is the templating engine. You'll also see that here. And finally, we use it for declaring persistent entities, which will not be shown in the screencast. So that's the way we start off. The next line is also boilerplate. Import you so You go ahead and pull in the entire library. Nothing to see there. Next line is interesting. Every single USOD application has what we call a site argument. It's a data type that's the core of this application. You can store various pieces of, in of information. They're usually things that require initialization. So for example, a database connection or a connection pool could be stored there. You could store settings that need to be loaded from a config file. All of those things would be good things to store here. For our application, we don't have any of those because we're dealing with something very simple. Nonetheless, we still have to have the data type. So we'll just go ahead and put in an empty constructor. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is declare our routes. We use the mkusode function. This is a bit of template Haskell. You don't actually have to know what it does on the inside, but just to give you an overview, it's going to create the URL data type, which you'll see very soon what that does. And it goes ahead and creates uh, parsing functions, rendering functions. It does everything that normally would be very boilerplate. It does it for you to make sure that everything is type safe, everything matches up properly. So we now we type in the name of our data type. The next, this is our first bit of quasi quotation. We're going to use the parse routes quasi quoter, which just makes it easier to define our routes. The way this one works is that each line is a URL pattern, which also ends up creating a constructor in our URL data type. So the syntax is the first word, everything up to the first space, is the URL pattern. So in our case, that's just going to be a slash, because we're dealing with the root of the application. Now we have to give it the constructor name. We're going to call this root. R. I usually put a suffix of a capital R at the end of all of my routes so that uh, they can be easily distinguished. Next, we need to give each and every request method that we want to use. In our case, we're just going to be using the get request method. So for our application, we're just going to have that single request on uh, that single resource pattern. Next step is an instance of the Yesod type class. The Yesod type class is a central place for storing a lot of the settings for an application. You can put in default layouts, you can put in you can put in authorization lists, all of those kinds of things. The only function that you need to define by def uh, that you have to define is app root. Remember that Yesod constructs URLs for you. So if you use the root R constructor in your application, Yesod has to know how to convert that into an absolute URL. So the way that it works, working backwards here, it would take the root R, 
it would figure that the relative URL is just going to be a single slash. And then it's going to append that to your app root. So as a little trick, if you want to, you can give the app root as an empty string, and then root r will be converted into a single slash. This isn't really recommended for production, because that won't work well when you use, for example, the, uh, the atom feed or the sitemap uh, helpers, because those are going to need absolute URLs. So the best thing to do is to type in something that actually works. So in this case, we're saying that we're going to be serving this application from localhost on port 3000. We don't need to put the slash in at the end. In fact, it's better if you don't. So after you have the usode instance, the next thing we need is to define our handler functions. In this case, we only have one handler function for the root r constructor with the get request method. So the pattern for naming these things is very straightforward. Get root r. Now, the type signature for a handler is all going to live inside a handler monad. There are two type arguments for a handler. There's the first, which is going to be the site argument uh, data type, which is hello world, and then the response type, which in our case is going to be rep HTML. Rep stands for representation. Since Yusota is, uh, is a RESTful framework, we talk about representations of data. So in this case, we're saying explicitly we only want to be serving an HTML representation. There's other representations available as well. So for example, there's rep HTML JSON, which is saying, based on the request headers, serve either HTML data or JSON data. In our case, we're going to keep things simple. We're only providing an HTML representation. Moving on, get root R is equal to, we're going to use a hamlet to rep HTML function. Just to keep things simple, we're now going to see our second bit of quasi-quotation. So now we're creating a hamlet template within the Haskell file. And then the hamlet to rep HTML is going to handle all of the conversions for us. So we're going to do something very simple. Create an h1 tag, have it say hello world. And we're done. Finally, we need to write a main function. This is just a standard main function. We're going to use the built-in basic handler function for usode, which uh, either uses a simple server, which is really only meant for testing purposes. It uses that simple server. And if it sees CGI environment variables, it'll serve via CGI. This is really only meant for testing purposes. In production, you could use fast CGI, there's an upcoming uh, back, you can actually use any of the backends that are available for WAI, so please check out Hackage for those because those get updated. So what we do is to WAI app, hello world, and then we're going to call the basic handler, 3000 saying which port we're running on. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's hope this compiles. It compiles, we even get notified exactly where to go. And voila, we've now completed the Hello World screencast tutorial for Yusuf.